Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime. John in Character presents Hidden Heroes of History. Stories that make you wonder, hey, how did I not know that? Featuring your historian in chief, Jonathan Cormer. <clears throat> oh, uh, and his trusty hedgehog sidekick, Reginald T. Hedgehog. Well, well, these updates to your pond are looking spectacular, Glimmer. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a true marvel when we're done, isn't it? Now, Let me cut down this branch so we can use it as a beam. Uh, Do you need a saw to cut that in half? Nah, I got it, Reggie. Just gonna use my old teeth. Being a builder is in a beaver's nature. How impressive. Well, as a hedgehog with small chompers, I need to stick to tools. Oh, and it looks like I need some more nails. I uh, think we left them on the shore. Hmm, well... Oh, what do you know? There's Jonathan. He can grab some for me. Oi, yoo-hoo, Jonathan, Jonathan. Oh, hey there, Reg. Are you out on our weekly hike through our lovely folktale forest? You know it. Uh, what are you doing out there? Oh, I'm just helping Glimmer make some new updates to Glimmer Glass Pond. Uh, Could you bring over some more of those wooden nails? Sure thing. This is Glimmer's Pond? It is. Oh, it just so happens to be my favorite pond in the world. Ah, shucks. Why, thank you. I built the whole thing myself. And now, Reggie is helping me expand. Wow, uh, hi, Glimmer. It's nice to meet you. And you. Uh, welcome to Glimmer Glass Pond, soon to be home of Glimmerland. Ta-da! Already built. We've got the lounging lodge over there, uh, which is where I read a nap and do all my relaxing. Uh, this is the food fort, which I have all my meals, and that's the den where I play games, watch new shows, and practice the fiddle. And some woodland, don't you know? I'm like a furry little wood chipper. Astounding, isn't it? Are these the plans you drew up for what you're adding to the pond? That's right. These are the blueprints for the expansion called Glimmerland. A totally immersive experience. We've got the wetland wonder that will be created just over there. Uh, Beavers help create ecosystems like wetlands for other animals to live in and reap the wonderful natural benefits. And this is the pollution pulverator. Uh, Beavers' structures help filter out bad, harmful stuff in the water. Wow, these blueprints are amazing. Oh yeah, you betcha. We happen to be a keystone species, which means we play a pretty important role in shaping the environment around us. And we help make habitats or homes for other living things. They are ecosystem engineers. Habitat creators. Aw, shucks. Uh, You know, I think I actually have a story about some amazing folks that you would really love, Glimmer. You may have even heard of them before. Oh, yeah? Are they beavers, too? Uh, they're not, but they are habitat creators, kind of like you. To other humans like me, they're known as architects. Architects? That's right. An architect is a person who plans, designs, and oversees the construction of buildings. Oh, that is like me. Well, I would love to tell you the tale of two amazing architects today. Helen Lu Fong and Norma Merrick Scleric. That's right, Mr. Reg. Glimmer, Jonathan shared the stories of these amazing women with me just a few days ago. You got to hear this. Ah, oh, let me settle into this chair I made and I'll be ready to listen. Ooh, what a beautiful chair. First up, Helen Lu Fong. Just picture it. Home of Tinseltown. Oh, he means Hollywood, 
which is in the same city where Ms. Fong was born, Los Angeles, California. Yes, nifty folks were wearing their shades, putting on their earth pads and burning rubber. Huh? Everyone was getting along like gangbusters. Uh, yeah. Uh, Reg just recently learned a lot of phrases that were used in the 1950s. I think this is his way of telling us that Ms. Fong was an architect in the 50s and 60s. That's right. She was made in the shade by age 12. Mm-hmm. I think what he's saying is she knew she wanted to become an architect at the age of 12. Ah, it was in her nature, too. It was. She became a very well-known architect and a leading figure in the Googie architecture style. Oh, you mean Google? Oh, not Google. Googie. <laughs> Googie. What an interesting name. It's a style inspired by jets, cars, and the space age. Meet George Jetson. Doodly 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 doo do. His boy Elroy, daughter Judy, Jane, his wife. Eh, I don't quite get ya. Oh, uh, this was a period when space exploration and technology were brand new, and in the forefront of people's minds. The Space Age! Jane, stop this crazy thing! Are you good? Oh yes, carry on. Ms. Fong began her career as a secretary in an architecture firm. She rose in the ranks and became a go-to leader, drawing up new career blueprints for women who wanted to join the male-dominated field of architecture. Ah, I see what you did there. She was the one you would call if you wanted to get something done, even after she retired. During her career, she focused on designing and styling the inside of buildings. She became known for daring color choices and attention to little details like doorknobs, lighting, and even silverware. The details are so important. That's so true, Glimmer. She really cared about how people moved through space and was known for making restaurants, cafes, and other buildings eye-catching. For example, in the car-obsessed town of Los Angeles, restaurants started to take on design features that resembled the cars themselves. She wanted folks who were driving or walking by to feel invited into her buildings. A noble goal, if I do say so myself. I agree. Ms. Lu Fong innovated new angles, shapes, and even neon lights through her designs. These were all things that became part of her signature style and influenced a lot of other architects and designers. Hmm, maybe I can add a few of her signatures to the food court. A uh, pop of color, uh, invited seating. Pass me those blueprints, Reggie. Oh, while you draft up some new designs... Drafting, or turning the vision for a building into a practical blueprint that outlines the steps of a project, the materials, and all the other details. Oh, excellent, Reg. Yes, I am, thank you. <sighs> Anyways, while you draft up some new designs, I'll tell you about our next innovative architect, Norma Merrick Scleric. It all started when Ms. Scleric was born in Harlem in 1926. She was always very good at mathematics and science in school. Ah, my favorite subjects. And her father encouraged her to study architecture. She went on to graduate from Columbia University's architecture program as the only black student and one of the only two women in her class. Ms. Scleric became the first African-American woman to pass her license exam in New York and California, officially beginning her career as an architect. Ah, <sighs> a career filled with firsts. You know, you're very right, Glimmer. She also became the first black woman to own her own firm alongside two women named Margot Siegel and Catherine Diamond. She faced prejudice both at school and in her career, which meant she was treated unjustly for being a black woman. Oh, well now, that goes against the Beaver Builder's Code. Uh, and what is the Beaver Builder's Code? Ahem. <clears throat> Repeat after me. Repeat after me. 
I, a maker of habitats most esteemed. I, a maker of habitats most esteemed. Swear to make dwellings with one and all. Swear to make dwellings with one and all. From the littlest critter. From the littlest critter. To the tallest of the tall. To the tallest of the tall. Oh, what a beautiful pledge! Welcomes everyone into the fold. Uh, don't fear, though, Glimmer. Miss Caleric certainly triumphed over the obstacles that others placed in front of her. Miss Caleric went to 19 different offices and was turned down for work before she got her first job in New York. She never gave up. She was a trailblazer, just like Ms. Lu Fong. Ms. Galeric is most recognized for designing two buildings, the United States Embassy in Tokyo, Japan, and the Terminal 1 station in the Los Angeles International Airport. But she was a part of a number of significant projects throughout her career, and she was the inspiration to many who came after her. Well, she's already an inspiration to me. I think I'll rename the Glimmerland School of Builders to the Norma Merrick Scleric School of All Things Architecture. Oh, that's a perfect tribute to Ms. Scleric Glimmer. She just so happened to be a mentor to younger architects and taught at architecture school throughout her long career. Another architect named Roberta Washington, who was born in Ms. Scleric's hometown of Harlem, once said she was an example to other women that it was possible to be herself and accomplish what she did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you okay, Glimmer? Oh, I, I just love when people inspire other builders. It looks like you'll be joining them with Glimmerland and all of the hard work you've put into making this space. Aw, oh, gee, thank you. I am pleased as punch to have learned more about these habitat creators. And look how much it's added to my design. This place is going to be spectacular. Some googie angles. A school in Ms. Scleric's name. Ooh, neon lights. You darn tootin'. It'll be a sight to behold. Well, we really should get back to work then. Uh, will you join us, Jonathan? Oh, I'd be honored. Uh, just one more thing before we start building. What's that? Oof, I can't believe I forgot to show you the Super Duper Dipper. I thought a slide would be a magnificent way for my forest friends to get into the water on a particularly hot day. It's one of the first things we built. We know how to prioritize. There are three loop-de-loops, don't you know? Wow. That looks so scary. But fun. Want to go try the slide, Jonathan? Uh, well, uh, yeah, sure, please. Uh, one time, then it's back to work. I swear by the Beaver Builder's Code. I mean, Reggie, I don't see why not. Hmm, all right. Race you there. Oh, wait up, Reg. <laughs> Last one there is a rusty nail. Tally-ho! Cowabunga! Mommy! Hidden Heroes of History is a John in Character production. This story was written by Molly Murphy and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Sound Studios. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalestorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalestorytime.com. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next. Once upon a time.